so that your internet speed will be fast enough. Okay. Uh -huh. That is important. So that your internet speed will be fast enough. Don't use a 3G or a H kind of network. It will not help. So, uh, <clears throat> Okay, so I think this is recorded for the sake of other persons so that we can do. But we are, we are 119. How come we have only these few numbers? Okay, please, if you can hear me, send me a message that you can hear me so that I'll continue. I want to share my screen and take you through the entire process so that you can see what I do and all that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, so up here. We're starting now. I'm trying to confirm the email I will use since I just have to create it. Okay. Then this is correct. Okay, so here. So here we go. Okay. All right, thank you very much. So I begin, I'm going to share my screen. Please, I want you to do this with me because I don't want anybody to be left behind. So you will do this with me, okay? For those of you that are stuck, just stay where you are. I'm going to be very fast, you know, I'm, we're going to get there together. So it won't be a very difficult uh, you know, adventure. Now, the first part of it is creating a real account. Now, remember that you can't even practice on demo. If you don't create a real account, they don't give you the privilege to use their demo without creating an account with them. That's what they do. So we need to create a real account so that we can have access to the demo for practice. Okay, that's how it works. It's only when you created a real account, but even if you are not, you're not going to use it at all, even if you're not going to fund it at all, but you just have to create the account so that you can have access to the demo for your practice, right? So what we'll do now is to create a real account. And please, like, this, like I said, you always have to receive mails from them that is except you you don't want to and so what i advise was you can create a special email for just this so that whatever mail that comes there you know it's about trading and all of that because if it has to do with your official mail there'll be a lot of uh, mails and all that so you could create a special mail that is if you've not done that and then but if you don't mind you can use whatever mail you have and then that's okay I will advise you use Gmail, not Yahoo Mail. Yahoo Mail can be a little bit problematic, but in case you have that no problem, we can manage that. So let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen now, and then I will take you to where it all begins, okay? All right. All right, so this is my screen. If you can see my screen, send me a message that you can see my screen and that will be it. And then I start. So I'll come here. This is the page. So I will click on this and then my journey begins. So I will tap on here. So it takes me here. This is recorded, so don't worry. For those of you um, who may miss it, you can get the recording thereafter and then, okay. So it will take me to this Deriv platform, okay? And then I'm going to go to not login because I don't have an account yet. I want to open account. So I click on create, I tap on create free demo account, right? It comes up with email. So all I do is I will put my email. That's the email I want to use. And I click on 
I tap on agree and I click on create demo account, right? It will tell me that they was, they've sent a link until I get that message, the link has not arrived. So I have to wait until I get the message that uh, I should check my mail. Okay, let's just hang on a bit. Sometimes it's too much of traffic and all that. Okay. Okay, let me go over it again. Please bear with me. We just have to go through this process. We can't start training because I want you to have your own copy, your own MT5 a demo, whatever, so that whatever I do, you will do the same. That's the way we are going to learn. I don't want you to just watch my screen and you don't have the same thing with, you know, to practice. This network is not helping me now. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to use another network. Um, okay. Can't believe this network is this bad now. Let me try that. Fresh. <sighs> this is not supposed to be. I've not experienced this kind of slow network before. Okay, let's try it again. So I click on create a uh, create free demo and then I come here that email and I tap on create demo account There's a lot of traffic on this site, no doubt. So, but let me try something different. Um, okay. Um, I don't know what it is, uh, why the network is misbehaving. So some you would somebody would do, do us a favor in case I don't know maybe your your network is better. You will share your screen wherever you are. We are going to mandate you to share your screen. That will be somebody who is just starting. If you would do that so that you can help us, I just want to show you what to do and how to navigate some options. There are some options you need to choose. Otherwise, you'll not be able to do it by yourself. So there are some things you need to choose and some things you need to avoid. So I, I think Dr. George, if you can allow somebody to share his or her screen, that will do so that we can move forward. So Dr. George, if you can. Okay, somebody is still staying at the email. No, I can assure you they think it's not there. It's not there, I'm in the mail now. It did not go. Okay, but um, please, somebody can share his or her own. It's just to show you, I already have an active account. So there's no way I can do it again. I have to create a free mail. Who can help us out? Okay, Mr. Solomon, 
Okay, you can share your screen. I will I will permit you to share your screen. Okay, you can share your screen, Mr. Solomon. Go ahead, if you will. Just tap on share, tap on screen. I don't know why my own is talk like this. Maybe it's because of the many load I have. I'm the one. Let's just get through this particular hurdle. That's the most important thing. But if you can register, if you can do it, Anybody can share screen at this point, please. Just to be, want to use your screen to show people what to choose, what to do at each point. Meanwhile, let me try again and see what happens. Just tap on, go to your Zoom, you will see share. You tap on the share, you will see screen as an option. You tap on the screen. Okay, don't worry, I will share my screen because I've been allowed to do that. So don't worry, Solomon, you can, you can stop sharing your screen. Thank you. <clears throat> I will share my screen now. I think I've been able to go through that, please. Okay. So uh, if you can see my screen, I think we're through. So if you, if you click on the link and it gives you a space to tap your, you know, to put your email. So you put your email, it's going to send you a mail. A mail is going to be sent to that email of, of which you use, and then you tap on it. And then um, you can either choose verify my email or you can tap on this button, on this link. Either way, you can tap on this part, it will still go. Okay, so I'll just tap on verify my email straight up. And Just have a little patience. This is where some of us are. And why this usually delays is if your network is poor. So we just have to be patient. After clicking verify my email, uh -huh. uh, to take you to where it says, Thank, uh, uh, thanks for verifying your email. Where do you live? Choose country. I know that we have some persons in Ghana. Please choose Ghana. Choose where you live. In this case, I'm going to choose Nigeria. You can only choose one option. If you're Nigerian, choose Nigeria, don't choose Lagos, okay? So I choose Nigeria and I click next. Keep your account secure with a password. You need to create a password, an alphanumeric password, an alphanumeric password, and that will be it. So the password I want to use is, um, it's gonna be, um, what is gonna be the password? Alphanumeric. So I'll use capital letter M me for trades at dollar. Me for trades at dollar. Okay. So I will go and say start trading. I want to save it because it is my phone. So you save the password so that you don't have to be typing password every time you go there. Now it's going to take you to this piece where you have, where would you like to start? So you say start here, okay? Just tap on start here. When you tap on start here, it will take you to this page, I mean to this page, right? right? Now, if you check, this is real account. Please follow me closely. I need to explain this part to you. This is real, this is demo. So you want to create a real account, you will still use the demo thereafter anyways. 
So we just want to go ahead and click and create the 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 reel. So if you see, it's actually the reel is selected. That's why that's why you have the red underlined. Okay. So if we to choose demo, demo will become the red underlined. But we are looking at reel. So when we say reel, we say create a derivative account, right? So I tap on create a derivative account. Now when it comes to create a, it, it tells you choose currency, fiat currencies. Let me give you an expo. Let me give you an expo. If you choose uh, uh, which currency has the, the heaviest uh, exchange rate, it's pounds, pounds sterling. If you choose pounds sterling, it, it will, your account will be credited in pounds sterling. If you make five pounds sterling, the exchange rates will be bigger than dollar, okay? But the problem is we don't have people readily in Nigeria that exchange pounds sterling. And because of that, dollar is the most common and the most floating currency. But if you were outside Nigeria, it would be better to use pound sterling. But if you're in Nigeria, what is flexible and what is recognized within our exchange is US dollars so that you can easily convert the money to Naira. So I would tap on US dollars huh? in my own case. You can choose anyone anyways. But if you have a medium of exchange, no problem. But you can use, use dollar because majority of agents within Nigeria almost 90, 98% are using dollars. So you have, you, you find it difficult to exchange your, your pounds when you make money. So use dollar, huh? then click on next. When you click on next, it will tell you, take you to where you should fill your name. So I'm going to type my name, first name, surname, date of birth. This is where I really want to show you. If I tap on date of birth, you will see that it's taking me to this. So people make mistake of going back and say, okay, maybe your, your date is 1980 something. So you keep going back. That is not how you do it. If you check here, there is actually 2003 on top. I'm sure you can see that. So what you would do is you will tap on the 2003 itself. It will bring out only years for you. So the thing is you go to your own years, you find your own year, right? In my own case, I will choose 1990 and then I will look for, of course, I was born in August 1st, 1990. So I will tap on August 1st. I'm using this in case I will have to use this account again. So now I will have to put your phone number. So Okay, and then I click next. When, it, when I click next, it takes me to address. Please note that the address you're putting here must match your bank statement. The, the address you have in your bank statement because they will need to verify the accounts for you when you want to withdraw up to $10,000. So you may say, ah, will I ever make up to $10,000? You'll be shocked that you will eventually. And by the time you want to withdraw, they say you can't withdraw the account. There are people whose money has been stopped here just because they just use any address. So your address must be the one that has either the one you have in your uh, uh, national ID card or the one you have in your driver's license, if there is address there, or the one you have in your, uh, what do we call it, a, a bank statement. So just use an address that you have in your bank statement. So in this case, I will use an address like uh, this. Okay, so okay, I will use I will use this address. Okay, fifteen Williams Avenue, Modi Estate. Now, second line of address is not important. Town, city. We just put the town or the city. You can put the city Port Harcourt. For example, state or province, you come to rivers. You come to rivers. Um, 
Okay. Just follow me closely. Now you look for the zip code of that location. In this case, I'm just using a floating number, usually six digits, and I click next. When I click next, it will take me to the next step four, jurisdiction and choice of law. And then I will come to, please make sure no matter what, even though you are polit politically exposed person, tap on this and tap the second one. That's all you need to do. Click on add account and it will tell you that your account is successfully created. That is the first part of it. You say your account is ready. Phone your account to start trading. You say maybe later, okay? You cancel this payment problem, tap the X, you have a real account, but that's not with ends. So now you see that you have a real account. If you want to add a crypto, because here accepts crypto, you can also come here and tap on, you see why I tap where you have the dollar, you can tap on add or manage account, and then you can select crypto. We have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and then we have the USDD. But if you don't want any of them, you, okay, I'll just add Bitcoin to it, and that will be all. You can add to it. You can, you can fund this account with Bitcoin. You can also withdraw through Bitcoin. All right. But okay, so we have a Bitcoin account, but I want to still go back to the USD account. If you check, you have USD dollar account now. Please follow me closely. Now, the next thing that you need to do is to add the real account. This is where the thing really matters. So I'll click on add real account. Remember that I've created a password before, which I think I must have forgotten. I think it was me for trade. at dollar okay now was the account that time okay so i'll click on add account when i click on add account it will tell me choose a server the server you're using is africa if you're in africa if you're in asia your address must have been asian use asia so africa has different servers you, you choose africa you can't choose asia choose africa if you're in africa and click add account when you click add account it will say success you say maybe later. Look at this number. This is the number that you take to your MT5. So you copy out that number and the last password. Don't ever forget that. You copy out this number and the last password. And then you keep it somewhere. You copy out this number, the last password. I will tell you what to do when we get there. So that is just by the way you created a account. But this is the next thing. Your real account is safe and secure. Make sure your information are true and are very accurate. Now, having talked about that, this is now when they will allow you to use your demo. You can now come over to demo. When you've gotten to this point, you tap on demo. They, they've given you $10,000 in the demo account. So here in this demo, you click on add demo account. And then you create another password for the demo account. Please, you can do that. Just type. You can use the same password around the clock for this. Just create a password. Okay, let me just do it. And then I will create on the same me for trades. Okay. And even if you forget your pass, your password, you can always say reset it anyways. So the account has been created. I have a demo account. So all I need to do is copy this demo account. You use it to log in. You can phone, you can top up. Your, your current balance is $10,000. That's what they will give you in your demo, okay? But you can decide to top up when you, you know, if you want to do that. So you just copy this account login number. You will need it, okay? When you copy the account login number, I'm talking about this one. Talking about this one. That's talking about this number. You copy it. All you will need is that number and the last password you created. Please make sure you, you know the password and this number. And that is why you will need to be able to link this account to your MetaTrader 5. And that will be it. And as when you get there, everything will become. Going to how to reflect it in your demo, all right? In your demo account. So I want to see if there is anybody that has gotten to this place. I can't see any of your comments. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and begin to interact with you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Okay, Solomon, you say your network was poor. So where are we? Are we really following? Can somebody talk to me? Who has been able to complete his registration?
Can somebody talk to me, please? You've been able to do. Okay, zip code. Make sure you can goggle your zip code so that you don't get the wrong zip code. If you're within a quiet bomb, zip code is 520211. What's your area? Just goggle it. What's your area? Goggle it by the side. Zip code for so 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 area. They will is on Google. Just copy the number and put it there. Delta. Your zip code in Delta is uh just hold on. Let me check for you. Um, hold on, just give me like one. 30 seconds. Zip code Delta, which part of Delta, madam? Which area of uh, Delta? Because it has areas. Worry, okay. Uh, zip code for worry is, uh, mama, show me, show me, show me, show me. Hold on. Okay, it's three three two two three two. Have you gotten that? Three three two two three one. Sorry, three three two two three one. That's it. I've sent it to you. Three, three, two, two, three, one. Any other person? Where are we, please? I want us to do this together because we are going to have a class today. Any other challenge? I want another person to, to uh, we're doing this together. Concerning your first line address, you can't recall the address you use in opening your account. If you can't recall the address, Put your home address. Put your home, your own permanent home address. Because with that one, you can get a document, maybe a NEPA bill or something, but put your home address. If you can't remember the address on your this thing, put your home address, please. Please, I'm still with you people. It's an adventure. We are going to enjoy everything. So please, let's just get done so that we can, we can fire on. I want all of us to get to the same level so we can start. Where are we all? Let's see. Yes, you can use the address of your national ID card. Uh, that's to say that that is what you will use to verify your address when the time comes, okay? Where are we? Uh, I'd like to mention names. Apostle GN, are you with us? Chizoba Mokeke, are you following? Where are you? Uh, Mr. George Johanna, are you with us? Onyeye Ekejuba, are you following? Mr. Prince, are you following? Mr. Solomon, Mr. Stephanie, and then Mr. Sonny, are you with us? Yeah, we are stopped. Nice, well done. So, okay, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, so, uh, my Stephanie, there is something I want you to do for me. Everybody should go to Google Play Store and download MetaTrader 5. If you did not download it before, you can do that. It will not take you five minutes to download MT5. Let's do that now, please.
try and bring your conversation to the Zoom uh, uh, chat room. Okay. Okay, you have, you have it already. So you are going to share your screen because I want to show you how to connect it. Please, we look at it. I can already connect it because I already have it on MT5. So please let us do it. Share your screen. You are permitted to share your screen. All I want you to show me is copy the number, that number, the login, account login number that, you know, copy that login number. Remember the password you put in your head. Do it for your demo reel, anyone, and then go to your MT5. I will show you what to do. Everybody should look. Everybody should look. Are you sure? This is where you stopped. Who is sharing screen? Dorito, please. You can't be sharing screen now. Let you are far away from where we are. When you finish this level and get to where you are supposed to get that login number. So we need somebody to share screen. Madam Stephanie, please share your screen. Just share where you copy the number and then we go to MT5. Please, let's do this because we still have an introduction to do today. This is just registration and we need it for our learning going forward. Who is sharing screen for us? Madam Stephanie, can you help us? Who have, who have been able to get to where you Anybody, Mr. Sonic, can you help us share your screen? I need to do this to, to show you how to connect it to your MT5. And that would be, Madam Fit, can you share your screen? Okay, what I'm saying, you should download is MetaTrader 5. It is actually on your MetaTrader 5, MetaTrader 5 app. Everybody is there, MetaTrader 5. Not for Meta Trader Five. Who is going to share screen for us, please? Prince Zero Tier, how far have you gone? I find it difficult to share screen. Okay, you must be in Zoom to be able to share screen. All you do is to go and tap on the Zoom app again. It will show you, you will see share, green button in the center of your Zoom. I need to show us how to connect to MT5. Since it is recorded, I just want somebody, one example. Then others can look at the recording and do it for themselves so that we can continue. Okay? Our class today will not necessarily need the MT5, but we need to get it ready and be prepared for it because from tomorrow we'll start engaging it. And I need to take us through a lot of introduction and put us through a lot of stuff. And then that will be it. So we're sharing screen. There was somebody that got almost to the end. Madam Stephanie was very fast, but where are we? Mr. Chisobam, are you with us? Where did you stop, sir?
sorry, you need to really have a good network. Please let's 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 decide and let, let's move forward. Who is going to share? Oh, so if you just share screen and share MC5, that's all. Let me show you what to do. For the sake of this recording. Okay. Okay, bring up the MC5. Thank you very much. This is uh, Stephanie. Don't worry, let me see. Choose about your way behind, but it's recorded. So, madam, tap on manage account that is in front of you. I'm sure everybody is seeing. Tap on manage account. All right, so we, you don't need this one. This one is the default uh, demo from the MetaTrader 5 itself. So you click on the, now if you check, there's a three dotted uh, a button, top right. So tap on that three dotted button, top right, top right, top right. Go back to where you were and tap on top right. No, sir. Go back to the original page where you yeah? are, manage accounts. Top right, click on delete account. I want you to see a fresh stuff. Top right, click on that button, delete account. Yes, deleted. Now click on the plus, there is a plus, top right. Now where you have find broker, type on that space, derive.com. D E R I V. That's enough. Just tap. No, V. Tap on Derive Limited. Don't put the dot. Okay. Now follow me closely. I'll go back to your your Derive dashboard where you copy the login number. Let this page remain. Just swipe. Go back to your good. Okay, perfect. So let's stay here. Okay. So this is your real account. But um, I want to I want to work with your demo. Everybody should follow. Just watch. I think your network is a little better. Okay. Now this is your demo account. Your number is two eight five three two four eight. So just copy the number. There is a, a a, a copy icon by your left, sorry, by beside that number, just tap on that number. Okay, that was not really the way to copy, but it's fine since you already copied it. Now, do you remember the password you created for this particular demo account? If yes, go over to your MT5. If that's if you remember the password. Now, yeah. Bring it on. Now, where you have login, paste that number there. Type the password you created for the demo account. Where you have password. Remember it's demo, it's not your real account. You can even change it if you want. So madam, just where you have password, type the password that you created. You must have created a password to allow you to have access to the login number. Hello, nothing is moving anymore. password, and then you click on login. I just want to show you something. So that is how you do. You, you copy the login number, type your password. If it was the real, you would change the server to derive server, not derive demo. And then you click login. Hello, my, you're not moving anymore. Your thing is tall. Hello, Madam Stephanie. Your screen is paused. It's frozen, nothing is moving. What's the challenge, ma? Hello, we are looking for your MT5.
Okay, you can stop sharing screen. Let another person uh, share the screen. Madam, you're not supposed to be confused. You're supposed to be following my instruction. Just follow what I'm saying, and then you will do. Don't go ahead of me. So if you, I don't know where you, you feel confused. You must have created a password to have allowed you. And that's why I said, don't forget your password. Okay? So um, can somebody else share the screen or you share your screen? I just wanted to help make you understand where you copy the number, how you link your, your life account or your demo account to your empty file because there is a relationship. So you may want to share your screen again. Please, let's do this so that we can move forward. You're not supposed to be confused. You were doing very, you were doing the right thing. You were following up. Well, just to put the password and then click login. That was what was left. MT5, go over to your, is that the password? Click on login. Okay, so this is your, your, your demo account, $10,000, all right? So this is what? Your demo account. Everybody should get to this level. Now, I want you to activate your real account. Do the same thing. Do the same thing you've done now with your real account. Do that now. Okay, you may have to do, you can do that behind the camera, but then do it and then let us know. All you need to do is go back to your dashboard, make sure it is on that reel, copy the login number, come over to MT5, right? And then when you come over to MT5, you, um, you choose, you paste the login, put the password, change the server. This time around, you change the server from the Reef demo to the Reef server. Okay, when you change it to the Reef server, you click login. It will be showing you real, not demo, right? So that is that. Then, okay, so that is that. So we are going to, you know, that is what, that is how to open the real account. It's not, but you needed to get that guidance, okay? So for those of us who are far behind, if this is recorded, you can look, watch, and you can rewatch it after the class, and then we do. So we are going to continue with our class. And I'm going to be speaking to us, you know, from now on. So at this point, uh, there's nothing, uh, but we're just here on Zoom. So please listen carefully. I'm going to start. One of the things I do as a trainer is first, I want to, you know, interact with you. That's why I ask you, how much are you looking at to make in a month? Okay, in a month as a trader. And I saw some very amazing, uh, feedback somebody said three thousand dollars somebody said one five somebody said five hundred somebody said one thousand dollars and all of that those are not bad but i have to be frank with you first and foremost trading is not a get rich quick scheme yes you can make a lot of money you can make a millionaire overnight all right and all of that but that, that doesn't mean that there are possibilities you will always make in one one million okay because it is not every time the market structure is always, you know, a given opportunity. That sometimes market opportunities are not available, maybe per day or at a time. So this is where, this is how I start. I don't train people. I don't want to begin to go through a lot of theory and say, what is Forex? Define this, define that. That is not important. But I'm going to start with the most important thing. And I said, you must have a notebook. Why are these, Terminology is the one I want to start with important because these are the things you will need to use often in your market engagement. All right. So whatever it is, you can read up whatever you want to read. But please, I want you to stay within what I am going to give you. Um, I teach you what works and what will make you money, whether I am here or not, at the comfort of your home by yourself, without anybody's guide, although you will be guided still for a period of one year. But I'm not this person that, that, you know, try to beat around the bush. I go straight to the point. What you really need to know to become a profitable, successful trader. Because you can read whatever material. So I'm not going to begin to come and read materials for you or begin to make you define things. No, I go straight to the point, what you really need. 
in this adventure, what really matters is, am I making money? It's not to speak grammar or to be able to define terms. Those are not important to me at all. I have shared with a few persons that some, that some, some of my students have trained, some, some, not all, that don't even know the meaning of some certain terms within the forex industry, but they are making crazy amount of money every week. All they know is that they know when to buy and to sell, when to stay out of the market, when to take profits and all of that. And that's what for me, what really matters. The business is about making money, not to express expertise and ability to define terms. So having said that, I'm going to just start by saying, as a trader, the first thing is that in my own world of trading, there are a lot of forex traders over there or the financial market traders everywhere. I have a different approach and my approach is simple. And my approach is this approach that helps people to grow gradually. It's called target-based trading. That is what I do and that's what I preach. What is target-based trading? Trading that is planned and then you trade your plan. What does that mean? Somebody said, I want to make $2,000 in a month and I'm going to help you break it down. How do you make the $2,000 in a month? $2,000 as at today's exchange rate is around 900 and something thousand now. So how do you make that in a month? This is how you make it in a month. You don't make all of that in one day. The problem with a lot of forex traders and why people are not making it is because they are greedy. They feel that they can you know, make a lot of money in one day. Of course you can, like I've always said, but that is not the way to grow. I believe in consistency and what you do from time to time. You know, you, you repeat, you know, you know your, your success is repetitional. It's not something that comes once in a while. So that is the kind of thing I teach. And that's why I have adopted a target-based trading approach. What, what that means is that you're looking at making $2,000 in a month. So you divide the 2,000 into 30, okay? You divide the $2,000 into 30. That's what I want to do. For those of you who say you want to make some amount of money in a month. So what you do is divide the $2,000, right? Divide it into 30. That's to say you're going to be trading for 30 days, for 30 days. That's to say 30 days, including Saturdays and Sundays. That's what it means for you to be able to meet that target so that you don't put yourself under pressure. So if you divide 2000 by 30 days, it means you're looking at making $66.67 every day. You're looking at making $66.67 every day. And can I shock you? You can do, you can make this one in less than an hour. You can do this in an hour. So if you, if you do it chunk by chunk, you know, little by little, you can't kill, you can't eat the whole elephant in one day. So you're looking at eating it gently and just making, this is what we call target base. The day you, when you meet your $66.67 for that day, you can do it, I can assure you, we'll do it together, we'll be trading together, okay, you'll see it. You can do this in less than one hour for it, in, in 24 hours, you can do this in one hour. And when you do, anyway, depending on when market gives you opportunity, you stay out. You know the problem of a lot of people? I can beat you that many people here will violate what I'm saying now. I've been doing this for the past five years, so I know what I'm saying. Yeah, people will say, ah, $66 in a day, that is well over 27,000. So why will I be looking for more? I will tell you why you will look for more. Because by the time you see that it is easy to make $66 within one or two hours, something will tell you, but why do I, why do I quit this market this early when I know that there are other opportunities I can make 200, I can make 300. Let me, let me continue to trade. So you begin to become greedy. And because you want to make more money, you begin to take decisions that are not clear. You begin to, you know, I use, I call it, you, you scratch for market opportunities when there are clear no market opportunities. In the process of your greed, you put pressure on your account and you lose money. Of course, I've said from the very beginning that you can lose money if you are greedy and if you don't have knowledge. So what you're going to have here is knowledge. But what I cannot help you is greed. That's why I want to appeal to you that please make sure you are a target base, be disciplined. I can teach you how to make money in forex, but I will not be able to teach you how to preserve that money if you're not greedy. Sorry, if you're greedy. So it's a very important thing. And I want to start that way. Secondly, when I do this training, there is a, this part I talk about and it's called emotional intelligence. It's called emotional intelligence. It's very important. Listen, and please follow me closely. You see, if you are emotionally, you know, uh, unstable, something is wrong with you. Maybe you are angry over something, and you're not you're not coordinated. Don't trade that period. It's an advice. Please don't trade. You see, when you when your money is involved, your emotions is attached to your money. So if your emotions are ruffled, you're not happy, 
something is wrong, you get angry with somebody, and you want to go and trade. You will pour all of those anger on the market. Please understand what I'm saying. These are something to do with professionalism or delay. If you listen carefully, you hear people say, uh, best forex traders, so, 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 portfolio managers in the UK, so, 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 lost so, so amount of money. Not because they are not professional, but because they allow the emotion to set in. I, that I'm speaking to you, I'm a professional trader, I've been trading, and when I know that I am not emotionally sound, I am, my spirit is ruffled or my mind is not clear, I stay out of the market because my decisions are going to be bended. I'm speaking to you out of experience, okay? Because you see, when you're trading, your money is attached to your emotion. Your emotions is attached to your money. And then you get angry, you get to experience a lot of things. So my own job here is to teach you how to be a professional trader. But I will not be able to restrict you from being greedy. Greedy has to do with your discipline. If you're able to stay disciplined, you will make a whole lot of money and you will never be threatened, okay? So there is a lot of information on that. There is training videos I have done. You get to see that eventually, but I'm just giving you this information now. So let us get starting. Uh, get your notebook. Let's start from trading. So we look, we're looking at uh, financial market. Please, this is not necessarily currency trading. If you check, we're working on the indices, okay? Indices. Now, indices is not tied. I tried to give us reasons during the first presentation that why, we, I have, why I'm telling us to trade indices is because this particular indices is not tied to any global occurrences, okay? Uh, nothing happens in the world that will affect the movement of this particular instrument or asset, okay? So it is completely detached from global events, interest rate, and the rest of other, you know, economy stuff. It is purely a technical market. So you don't need any fundamental knowledge to be able to, you know, to analyze this one. All you need is the technical knowledge, which of course I'm going to be teaching you how to do that, you know, to succeed with this one. That is one reason. The second reason is that you can trade this one on Saturdays and Sundays. You can't trade currencies on Saturdays and on Sundays. So you have more time to trade. You have more time to make money. But in, in currency trading, market ends close Friday evening by 11 p.m. I will open on Sunday by 11 p.m. or 10, depending on the time zone. So you have Saturdays and Sundays to trade this particular market. So we trade around the clock. Okay, that's the second reason. The third reason or the third advantage is that the volatility is high. Okay, the volatility with this asset is high, meaning that you will make faster money within a short time if you know what you're doing. The currency trading is, is slow. The volatility is only high when there are news. For those who know what I'm talking about, when there is a global news that is going to shake an economy, that's when the, the currency moves. Because during that period, people do a lot of transaction withdrawals and all of that. So, so I can so I can conclude by saying that indices is the best option if you want to make money. So you're welcome once again. So as a trader, so what is really trading? I told us in the first place that trading has nothing to do with buying of a, a dollar in exchange of selling of pounds. That is what, they, that's what conventional uh, you know, definitions say. And I told us that you see this particular trading, anybody that is trading, in fact, 95% of traders are speculators. That is all it is. You hear people talk about Bitcoin is going to go up and go down. Those are, those are speculations. There are some underlying factors that backs up that speculation or that supports that. So what I'm going to be teaching you is how to speculate prices. And that is what makes you a trader. That is that. Okay? So there's nothing that you're buying. Right, right. Remember this, that your, your, the asset you choose, the fiat you choose is US dollars. But you will never receive US dollars in your hand in the course of this trading. What you will receive is equivalent, the exchange rate of whatever dollar it is in Naira. So the question is you're trading uh, using dollar, you know, as the of course, as the account a uh, 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 track tree, but you'll be receiving Naira. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. you, be make, you may be making the money in dollars, but you receive it. So what are you, what were you selling? You're selling what in exchange of what? Remember, it's not a currency market. It's purely indices. Let me explain what the indices market is. Uh, indices is something that is tied to private companies, private investors, not tied to government, okay? So it has to do with, uh, for example, uh, you can pick Alibaba, for example. That's somebody's company. It has no relationship with government, although some certain government policies can affect its operation. 
But for example, okay, let's look at what happened with Tesla so this back. Uh, Elon Musk lost 15.5 billion. And that was because his shares declined. So those people that were trading Tesla, those people that were trading Tesla as you know as a stock or as a share or as an index will either make money or lose, depending on their position. So there was nothing wrong, nothing happened, it didn't affect America, it was an individual business. But in this case, it is most stabilized because um, this is not that indices that has to do with those kind of uh, you know, institutions, right? This is an indice that has to do with a fixed kind of investment. There's a kind of an insurance, a fixed amount of money, a volume that controls it. So whether there is a crash on any business or not, it doesn't affect the momentum or the flow or the movement of these assets or this instrument we're going to be trading, okay? So let me not confuse you with all of those words. So please, let's begin to write. As a trader, what you'll be doing is speculating and I'll be teaching you how to do that. So but write down what do you need. The first thing, let's begin to get familiar with some of these terminologies. One is equity. What is equity? Equity is something uh, like capital. But in the industry, we call it equity. Equity is the total amount of money you want to invest in trading. Okay? The total amount of money you want to invest in trading. That's equity. Or you can call it capital. You want to start a business today, you say, I'm looking for capital. That money you're looking for to start the business is called equity in trading. Okay? Now we, talk, we, we know of equity. The next thing is lot size or lot. In conventional uh, trading, we have four types of lots. Uh, 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 we have four types of lot sizes. We have the, the standard lots, we have the mini lots, and we have the micro, and finally the nano lots. Okay, now um, transactions and orders are done by lots, not by money. Let me explain that. If you have $200 invested in trading, it doesn't mean you're taking out $2 out of the 200 to trade, no. The $200 has been converted into lots. So you are trading in lots. You are buying and selling in lots. Just like when you want to buy shares, okay? Now, what that means is that you don't buy shares by a certain amount of money. They will tell you how many units of shares. That unit of shares has, you know, a, 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 a currency equivalent or a currency value. You say, I want to buy 50 units of shares. Okay, they will not calculate for you and say, okay, this is how much it is. The same thing with trading. You can't say, I want to trade with only $5. There's no provision like that. What you do is you trade with lot size. So your lot size determines how much money you make or how much money you lose. So if there is anything you should consider and you should be very careful about or careful with should be your lot size, your lot size. I'm going to, it's going to be more very practical. I'm going to show you, but let me just explain to you what lot size is. Okay. A standard lot size is around 10,000 units. A standard lot size, which is one lot, is equivalent to 10,000 units. What that means is um, you need about, for example, okay, let me explain this way. You need about 10,000 lots to move the market by one pip. Let me explain that. You need about 10,000 lots to move the market by one pip. What is pip? Price, um, price in points. Or you can say percentage in points. Now, what that means is, let me show you my, let me do a little uh, explanation here. Please follow me closely because I must take time and explain this periphery. So this is, um, please just look at my screen. So this is uh, eight, this is seven, six, five, four, three, two, right? So let us assume this is market environment. So this is two, where a particular market price is or a particular asset price is. Now, if the team moves from these two and goes to three, it has moved by one pip, assuming, just understand it that way. If it moves from two to four, it has moved by what? Two pips. So for you to be able to move the market, for you to move the market by one pip as a trader, you need to have about 10,000 lots. It's not easy to, to open a position with 10,000 lots. You need a lot of money to be able to open the market with 10,000 lots. That is why institutional traders are the people that have all this kind of money. There's a lot you're going to learn. So for you to be able to do that, you need 
a standard load capacity, which of course your money cannot carry. That's why a lot of people use leverage. In this case, the leverage here is constant. One is to um, 1,000 or 500. That's what the reef offers. I'm going to talk about it later. So, but you, cause you do not have the money to be able to use those kind of lots. You can't use standard lot size. You have to come down to your level. Mini lot size means you need, sorry, yes, you, you need 1,000. You need 1,000 lots, you know, to be able to trade in a standard mini lot. Take note, we have standard lot, then we have mini lot. The mini lot has a standard, okay? So you don't have all this money to do this kind of trading. That's why you have to come back to your, come down to your level. And then coming down to your level means you have to use, uh, remember what I said, I said this is conventional forex, but in indices, it differs. But the point I'm trying to make is that you need, you use lot size to be able to take an order, not money. So you, you cannot use standard lot. You can't use mini lot. At least you can use micro lot. You can use nano lot with indices. Let's just say that if your if your equity is small, you have to use a small lot size so that you will not put your uh, your capital or equity in under pressure. Okay. So if you have a very big equity, you can use a big lot size too. So the bigger your lot size, the bigger your potential profit or loss as well. Okay. So lot size is one of the most important things you must consider. It's important. We're going to look at it more practically. And I'm going to explain more. So that for now, just understand this basic term that lot size is actually that transaction cost, that thing you use to establish a transaction. You know, that virtual money, so, so to say, that you use to make a purchase, either you buy or sell an asset. That thing you use as a purchasing power instead of real money is called lot size, right? Now, after that, we have what we call PIPs, price interest point or Yes, or, or percentage in point, or price in point. What that means is that when the market moves from one to two, it has moved by one pip. It moves from a certain number to another number. You subtract the bigger number from the smaller number. Whatever is the difference is the number of pips it has moved. So let us assume that you're using 10 lots. Now, remember that lot multiplied by pips is actually the amount of money you will make in dollars. So if you use 10 lots, you multiply by, the market has moved by five pips, for example. 10 times five is 50. It means that you make $50, understanding that way. So as a trader, the first thing you're looking at is that, how many pips am I going to, am I looking at today? If I just get 50 pips in this market, this is how much I'm going to make. You multiply whatever pips you have with the loss size you will use. That will mean the amount of money you will make. Do you understand? So you can, de you can determine, you can decide how much money you are willing to make in the day. By doing, by doing what, how much market is going to move from here, maybe from here to this point. The question is how many pips is that? Oh, it is 70 pips. Multiply the 70 pips by the loss size you will use. Whatever is the outcome, is the amount of money you will make when the market eventually moves from here to this point. Vice versa, that's just the idea. So that's it. So, the three important thing you need to know is equity. Of course, the amount of money you need to, you need to invest to start trading. Number two, lot size, okay? Lot size. And then number three, pips. So lot size multiplied by pips is equal to amount of money in dollar made or loss, plus or minus. Okay, so that is that. So let us begin to, so we have established that. And that is very important, okay. So let's begin to look at uh, a few other stuff. But before I continue, I want to see if you are still with me. Are you still with me? Just send me a message that you're still with me, you're following. There is something you don't understand, you want me to explain again, I will explain. Some people are leaving and coming in. I know your network it may be bad. I just want you to reach, you know, reach out to me, you're following. Okay. Somebody said, can I sell some of those terminologies? Did you say, you mean to say spell? Okay, lot is L-O-T. L-O-T. Lot is L-O-T, okay? Okay, lot is L-O-T, pips is P-I-P. Price 
in point or, or percentage in point. But it's good to use a pricing point, pricing point, because it has to do with price. Okay, so equity is E Q U I T Y, bracket open capital. That's it. All right, so I'm going to begin to talk about the most important thing now, the thing that really matters. So let's begin to get serious now. Now, when you're looking at the market environment, okay, there are things that are very important. So I'm going to take us through that journey. Okay. I'm trying to share my screen. Sorry, please. Okay. Please, I want you to take note of what I want to say. My teaching are always very simple. I try to come down to a a baby level so that you will understand. So I'm not going to be speaking very much big grammar. I'm going to try to use very common stuff. You see, do you know how people make money from trading? Is ability to predict. Let me know is the word predict, to speculate that market is going to move from down to the top or from the top to the down. That's all you need to know. So if you're able to know that the market is going to move, then to maybe to this point, you'll be a millionaire. That is the same way. If you know what's going to happen in the next three years to Bitcoin or to Ethereum, you can predict with some level of, you know, you know of precision, you'll be a multi-billionaire. Why many people are wealthy is because they've been able to see the future ahead of time. And that is just the difference between the poor and the rich. The poor has, he sees opportunity and pursue it ahead of time and take position. So the way we make money is that we can see where the market is going and we take advantage. So if you are able to, to speculate and know where the market is going, is it going up or is it coming down? That is all you need to do to make money. Market goes up, you make money. Market comes down, you make money. It's as simple as that. Forget big grammar or what anybody will tell you. Now, the only thing is that there are a lot of technicalities on how to get, you know, to, to know these things. So let us begin to understand them. The first thing is, please take note of this terminology. They are, I begin to talk about the market itself now, okay? We have in every market setting, including a local market, two participants or two players in every market setting, buyers and sellers. Do we agree? In every market setting, we have buyers and sellers. You get what I'm saying now? Now, when you look at your MT5, your MetaTrader 5, your MetaTrader 5 is your marketplace where you make decisions and where you do your buying and your selling. So let us use Balogun Market in Lagos, for example. If, for example, the government said, we want two categories of people in this market, people who come to buy and people who come to sell. And that if you're going to come, you must have a uniform. And that if you're coming to buy, you must, have a, you must wear a green uniform, that is a green T-shirt. And if you're coming to sell, Sorry, yes, if you're coming to sell, you must wear a red T-shirt. Okay, I want to teach from that. Answer. So we have two players, therefore. We have people who are, who are going to wear green T-shirt for buyers. And then we are going to have people who are going to wear red T-shirt for sellers. These are the people who are coming to sell. They have product to sell, assuming. And the green guys are the guys who, have, who want to come and buy or who are buyers. And then the red guys are the sellers, right? So let us look at it. So, in every market setting, as far as trading is concerned, we have two players, buyers and sellers, okay? It will be like that till Jesus comes back. So the question is, are you a buyer or are you a seller? Why are you buying and why are you selling? That's why we're doing this. That's why I want to teach you. So you know when to buy and when to sell. That is all there is to know. So that before you get to know exactly when to buy and when to sell, there's a lot of information you need to get. And I'm not going to box it up. I'm going to help you understand it gradually, okay? So we have two players in the market. We have buyers and sellers. In the MT5 environment, we have the green guys and the red guys. The green are the buyers. So how do we know that the green are the buyers? Please follow me closely. Please don't, don't miss what I'm saying. If market is going up like this, huh? I want, it, I want it to look the way market does. If market is going up like this, please, we call it bullish trend. The word trend, T-R-E-N-D, is another word for direction. 
is another word for volume, for energy. That is energy of money. I don't want to be more, let me not go that deep. So the market is going bullish. That is to say the market are buying. When you see this kind of market, market is going up, up. <laughs> let me use very layman language. It's going up, up, right? You will see series of green candles forming to the upside. What that means is that buyers are in charge of the market at that time. Are you with me? Are, are we together? It means that buyers, that people are buying. So what you're expected to do is also to find a way and buy. Now, please write this somewhere in your notes. Never go against the major trend. That is the major direction of the market. If markets are buying and you want and you are selling, you'll be crushed. That's why it is said, never go against the trend. Why many people are failing is because market is going bullish. Now take note, another word for market is buying up, up, green, green candle in the terminology. That is within the industry, we say bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H. Bullish trend are uh, trends where uh, green candles are successively growing. That is going upwards. So when you see market going in this direction, we call it bullish market or bullish trend. Please write this thing down because in the course of time, I will be using this terminology very fast. You should know what I was talking about. What it means, if I say bullish trend, it means that series of green candles are forming to the upside. That is market is buying. Bullish market is market that is buying to the upside. When you buy, you're going up. When you sell, you're coming down. So what about sellers? Sellers are those red candles that are coming down, okay? Those red candles are coming down. We call it bearish trend, B-E-A-R-I-S-H. Please, what I'm showing you is elementary. We're going to go into eating the real meat, maybe not today. I'm going to be easy with you if you get there. So what I'm saying is very elementary, okay? So we have bullish market buyers, and we have bearish market sellers, the ones that are coming down. They come, they come with red candles. Some default settings, the, the green candles are represented by, by white. Why the red candles are represented by red? But the color is not the most important thing. The thing you should know is the direction. If the market is going up, oh, that is a bullish trend. If the market is coming downwards, it's a bearish trend. Case closed. You just know that. Okay. So having said that, we have bearish market, bullish market. This is bullish market. And we have this one to mean bearish market, market that is coming down. It is always denoted by a red candle, series of red candles. Don't worry, you'll get to see it. So that is where we are starting from, okay? All right. Now, let me ask you a question. If you go to Balogun Market, and let's assume, I've not been there, I just hear the name of the market. And maybe let's assume there is a world. The market is actually enclosed. There is a world. Or you have to pass through a gate. You, you don't see people that are inside the market. And then I'll tell you how many persons are buying in this market, are buyers. I'm sure you, you will find it difficult to know. You say, how would I know? There are a lot of people in there now. And they say, how many people are selling? You say, how would I know? So in the same market structure here, in the market environment, there is something that helps you to, you know, you know, to, you know, to determine or to, you know, to, you know, to closely assume the total number of buyers and sellers. So for example, let me give an example. If there are 1,000 persons in a market, 700 persons are, came to buy and 300 are sellers. We, how many, uh, which, which, candle, uh, uh, which of them are we going to have more green candles? Remember that buyers are 700, sellers are 300. Where do you think we're going to have pressure, more momentum to? Response. If we were to do tug of war and we have 700 persons dragging 300, where do you think the energy will go to? It will go to the 700. That is to say, if we have 1,000 people in a market, and out of the 1,000 people, 700 are buyers, it means you're going to have bullish trend. It's as simple as that. The, the sellers will be dragging, you know? The sellers will be dragging. The sellers will be dragging. The buyers will overshadow them. It will be, it will be something like this. This is 700 against 300. So the market will still be bullish. Are you with me? Now. That is what happens. So if you go to that kind of market and you have 700 people buying and you did not know that there are 700 persons, but there is something that tells you that, ah, that maybe you watch from the screen, right? You watch from the screen that tells you that, look, okay, when you now see candles, green candles becoming plenty, 
you know, much. Now, so it now interprets to you that ah, in that market behind this wall now, it means that more people are buying. When then after a while, you now see that the red candles are becoming, you know, stronger or maybe becoming more taller than, you know, I'm just trying to help you understand or to put your mind on something, something that helps you to read what is actively happening behind. Then you say, okay, 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 okay. The red guys are taking over, they're taking charge. Actually, it has to do with numbers. All of these are games of numbers. So by the time the red guys begin to, you know, to, to be much, they were initially summary buyers. All of a sudden, people started st selling more. And then we now have 800 sellers. The buyers are now 200. You will discover that the red candles will become more. They will become more plenty. I'm trying to make you understand it as easy as that. The, the sellers will become in charge at that time. The buyers are being over, overthrown. Okay, so this thing is always like that, tug of war, tug of war. So during that period where the sellers are in charge, you also fall and sell because that is the major trend that time. When the buyers were in charge, you cannot go and be selling because the buyers will cross you. You also find you look for a position and also buy. Let me help you understand this. Thing. What is money, is volume. Hello? What any financial market. The volume has to do with money, investment. You know that, oh, there are so many things you will learn. You know, Elon Musk was the one that actually, not only him, that pushed Bitcoin to 40, 50 something thousand at the time. I think it was 40 something, I was there. Bitcoin came to a range. What I mean by range? Equal buyers and sellers. Nobody, let me explain something to you. I think this is true. I don't want to jump. I want to take, take my time. If I jump now, I will be giving you too much information in the first place. Listen, if you see market that is going bullish, what is pushing this market in such a momentum is volume of money injected. Volume of money injected. Sometimes you will hear CBN, uh, CBN injected 300 something million dollars to the first market. What they are trying to do is that they want Naira to be strengthened. They inject money. It is money that moves the market. Good. So when investors like Elon Musk and the rest of them invest, I mean, inject money into a particular asset, it pushes that market. That was why Bitcoin skyrocketed within 24 hours. The thing went all over. Elon Musk, Tesla has invested $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. He bought Bitcoin, Bitcoin went up. Because what he, what he did was that he pushed, he pushed money. He, he put volume. Money, volume is what pushes the market. So the market began to move. Now, if somebody now say, okay, I want to bring Bitcoin down, the person does not use his mouth to say, he will also inject money. And where money wins, market goes that way. So somebody can decide to say, okay, I want to short Bitcoin. I want to sell it. You can't, you, how do you sell? You have, it is institutional traders, what we call the, the market makers that moves the market. And what moves the market is money. You are the retailer, you don't have money that you can go against Elon Musk. You don't get the picture. That's why we say, don't go against the trend. In, in, in core trading, the word trend means money. It means direction of money. That's where money is going. You can't go against, you, you have $100 in your account and somebody has $1.5 billion. You want to oppose that person, he will cross you. So what you will do is, you also follow him. The person is buying, you say, okay, let me just also go behind you. You pitch to make some money from you. You can't go against him. You don't have the power to do that. Are you getting the picture? So it is, you follow the direction of money. That's why we say, never go against the trend. The word trend in, in trading, in the real sense of it is money. That is direction of money, volume. We call it money energy. That's what happens. I'm telling you, that's what happened. Okay? So that is just what it is. So your MT5, uh, you will see two candles there, red and green candle. Your job is to know which, which, which people are in charge now. Is it buyers or sellers? And that is one of the reasons why I'm here, to teach you to know how to know if buyers are in charge or sellers are in charge. Okay. So I think that is clear. Please, if that is clear, let me know that it is clear. If that is clear, send me a message that that is clear. If you got that, send me a message that that is clear. Please, quickly. I want to be sure that you got that.
You understand that point that I've just made now? Never forget it because you will need it. All right. Okay, so that is actually how this market works. So you, your, your, your job is to speculate. Now, let me explain how. So how would I have known that uh, Bitcoin was going to go high? So if there was an insider who had information that Elon Musk is going to buy Bitcoin, what this naira, what I would do is I would go and begin to open buy position immediately because I know that definitely his money will push the market higher. So you see, ability to speculate has to do with the number or the, 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 the worth of information you have ahead of time. That's why I said any boy that has the capacity to predict the future even by three hours should be a multi billionaire. You get the picture? Because the question is, where is Bitcoin going in the next six months? Who truly knows? Who truly knows? Yes, we can. We can from using market history, market history, because as far as this market is concerned, there's a lot of history. It respects history and history repeats itself. You can look at, okay, from what I'm seeing, from the way my chat is going and based on what people have said and this and this, okay, it's going to so, so, so amount of money. And because you know that, you can inject money into it ahead of time. The same thing, that's what we call speculation. You're being speculative. And that's what trading is about. Ability to predict the changes in price, maybe from $10,000 to 20. That is what we call changes in price. You've, been, you've speculated and there must be reasons behind your decision. There must be reason behind your speculation, whether fundamental, whether sentimental, whether technical. The good thing about this industry is that you don't need those fundamental knowledge. You don't even need sentiment around it. All you need is pure technicalities so that your journey is easy. So that's how you make money from this market. Okay, so that is that. I've talked about that. And then the next thing I want to talk about is going to be, okay. So we've talked about trend. We've talked about trend. Please don't forget, we have to basically have trend. Now, um, we have basically two types of trend, bullish trend and bearish trend. But there is another one. Please take note of what I'm saying in this first class because I don't know if I'm going to repeat it. Now, so if market is going up, it's a bullish market, right? If it is coming down, it's a bearish market. Sellers, okay. Okay, now let's look at something like this. What if the market is not going up or it's not coming down? What happens during that period? Uh, I used to teach this for, I, this particular teaching I want to bring here is for my VIP students that I'm going to teach you. Not because you don't deserve to know, but because it is a little bit advanced for you. You don't even need it to make money, but it's good for your knowledge in the future. That is why we say when a market is not trending, it's not going up clearly, it's not coming down, it's dancing. Look at what you mean by dancing. It's not going up. You know, this is what we mean going up. Clearly, this is going up. Or clearly, this is coming down. But you are not seeing that. No up, no down. Rather, what you're seeing is a market that is dancing within a zone or a region. A certain price is not going up, it's not coming down. We call this kind of market a ranging market, or we call it consolidation, or we call it sideways, or we call it choppy market. Why is a market choppy? I'm going to explain to you so that you know the technicality behind a choppy market. Because when you see these things, it means something. You should know what to do as a trader. And that's why professional traders would advise and say, never trade in a choppy market because you don't know where the breakout is going to come out from. Because after every choppy market is always an aggressive breaker, either to the top or to the bottom. And I'm going to tell you why this thing happens. Please follow me closely and listen carefully. The money makers, the bankers, the, the institutional traders, the hedge funds, you know, guys, the guys who have money, they don't want to dash that money to you, a retail trader. They're looking for that your small, small money anyways. That's the truth. So the question is, remember that it is money that pushes markets in a direction. Even if all of us in Nigeria who are retail traders, let's just, let's forget the big guys. We don't say let everybody contribute money and we trade as retail traders. We will still not have enough money to push the market by 10 pips because it, it takes about 10,000 lot size to move the market by one pip. You don't get what I'm saying. You will understand it practically. It takes 10,000 lots. For you to have capacity to load 10,000 lot, you must have something close to maybe $1 million plus or thereabouts. Just to move the market by one pip. One pip is very insignificant. Okay, okay, fine. Then, because we do not have the money retail traders put together, community of retail traders put together, they don't have the money, you know, to begin to push the market in that direction. So 
when institutional traders who has the money like Elon Musk and the rest of them pushes the market, the market moves because their money is pushing that market. When, it, when, it, when the market gets to a point, they will now say, okay, remember they are doing investment when they do that. So they, they are pushed at the point when it comes to a certain price level, or a certain region, they begin to remove their investment. So the market comes to a point of low volatility. The market is no more moving again. It becomes kind of stalled. Hmm? So that area, that ranging area, you will not hear it anywhere. That ranging area where buyers, are, that is retailers stay. We call this retailer zone. Hmm? Retailer zone. Why is it called retailer zone? Because they, they, they are staying there. It is between retailers. Is, retailers are struggling to buy and sell. And they don't have any money to push the market beyond this level. So the market range for a period of time. Why is the market range? Is because the big guys have removed their money. They are watching. They want to know the way, where next they want to put the money or the way, where next they want to push the market to. So during this period of ranging, the big guys are no more there. They are gone. So the market is just there for only retail traders. Retail traders don't have money to flow, to push the market. So they keep dancing around the same circle. They keep dancing around the same circle. So now the, the, the big guys are ready. They want to come back to trade. They want to come back and put money. They now see that, okay, look at something. I want to explain something to you. This is what I've been a more, I'm going to go back to this study. It's, it's a more technical thing. You will not understand. I'm just trying to explain to you the things you should do, know, and all of that. So the, the, this is where the market has been ranging for, for it can range for five hours, almost, in fact, sometimes a whole day. It's not going up, it's not coming down. So during this period, you are not making money because you need to travel from one price point to another to make money. But when you are just within a particular region, within a range, you can't make money now, right? So it is advisable you stay out because something can happen. Let me tell you what will happen. For those of you who, are, who, who have knowledge about trading, you hear something that we call market MMM, market maker move. Okay, look at what it means. The big guys know that, okay, let me use this illustration. Within this range, eh, we have 1,000 retail traders who does not have money. They are just struggling. Are you with me? Good. Then the retail trader says that, okay, out of this 1,000 trailers, they have contributed a more than say they have, they have 10 billion. They have $10 billion. Retail traders put together, they have $10 billion, assuming. That is too big. Let me use $1 billion. They have $1 billion put together. And then they say, we want, we want to collect $600 billion. I mean, $600 million from them. That is, institutional trader says, we want to take out $600 million from them. How do they do that? Look at how they will do. They know that out of the 1,000 guys, the 1,000 traders within this region, 700 of them, 1,000 out of 1,000, 700 of them are placing a buy here. 700 buy order has been placed around here where I circle this thing. Are you getting me? What, why did they place a buy there? Those are foolish traders. And that's why we say during a ranging market, don't trade, stay out until this range is broken. I want to help you understand why they always advise you stay out because this zone is a very unfavorable zone for retailers. So out of the 1,000 guys, they place their trade here. All of them now, 700, out of the 1,000, 700 now place a buy here. Why did they place a buy? Because they believe that market will move from here to the upside for them to gain. Hmm? So retail traders, I mean, institutional traders, the, the big guys, okay. So there is a lot of order here amounting to almost six billion dollars depending on whatever that translates to this okay instead of them to support this market to go up so that these retail traders will make profit they say okay we are going to put one billion dollars and push this market downwards when they do that you were going up they now go against you you lose that way don't worry you understand why you lose if you're buying you're supposed to go up if the market goes down you'll be losing money so but this time around these guys have intentionally moved this market downwards because many people's order were there. They want to trap that your money. You get the picture now? So, but me and you, who would have waited for this to break out, will now follow these guys down. We now follow their trend. We did not go against them because what this guy did is going against them. They say, okay, we are coming down. You get the picture, please. I want you to give me feedback that you understand what I just explained. I'm trying to make sure you, I'm trying to make you understand it the way I understand. So please, Send me a message that you understand what I just explained. I'm going to do it all over again. 
I want to explain this all over again. So please quickly send me a message that you understand or you don't understand. Let me do it over again. Don't say you are following. Just let me know you understand what I'm explaining. I just want you to get the idea. If you don't understand, I will repeat myself and make it more easier. Okay. Don't say we understand. Do you understand, man? Try and be very personal, please. I will take it again. Now, look at it. I think uh, from my premises, uh, my premise, I have said that the, what you do is never go against the big money guys. That is never go against the trend. If a market is bullish, you as a retail trader, also follow that market that way. You are going behind those big guys. If you go against them, they will crush you. Have you seen a trailer go against a, how do I even put it? When a trailer hits a small, you know, a salon car, what happens? Head on collision. The trailer will still look normal, but that a, a salon car is finished, it's gone. It's because that trailer has a lot of energy. The same thing with the big guys. When you go against them, they will crush you. So the best thing is for you to go, you know, follow them behind. That's what we call trend. You, you trade with the trend. Don't go against the trend. Don't go against the money guys. That's what it means. Good. So, however, and I say, okay, it is money that pushes the market that forms the trend. Because another word for trend is money, direction of money. Don't forget that. Okay. So the market has been buying and come to a point of a standstill. You see that point where you have that box. And then there's a lot of talk of war between buyers and sellers. These buyers and sellers here are retail traders who does not have money to push the market beyond that point. But unfortunately, out of the 1,000 of them, assuming that are there, 700 says they want to buy, which means they still want to go up. Okay, They want to determine where the big guys will go. But they, you are not the one giving them money, so that they want to decide where they want to go. So now the big guy says, okay, since 700 of you are putting a buy, we that owns the money will drag the market down so the, you are now automatically going against the big guys you will lose money that way do you get the picture now so what is the advice when a market is ranging a chubby market is ranging or is consolidating please do not trade don't place a trade that period except on some strategic patterns which i will teach us going forward but the general advice is that don't trade when the market doesn't have a clear trend. That's the problem with a lot of people. That's the problem with a lot of traders. So that is where I'm gonna to stop tonight. Tomorrow, the class continues again by 8 p.m. We're going to go, I mean, sorry, by 7 p.m. We're going to go straight to Zoom. And we're gonna be, we are gonna continue. So Dr. George is going to send this uh, recording to you so that you can set up your MT5 and all of that. If you still have difficulty, please chat me privately. No, not privately, for the sake of other people. Ask your question in the main group there and then I'll be able to answer you. So if you have any questions so far from what I've said, please, you can ask your question and then let's look at how we can begin to answer them. Somebody said, no, so I don't understand. Okay, Mr. George, Johanna, do you now understand? Because I feel this message came a little bit late or earlier. Please talk to me. Uh, let me see what he said. Some people don't understand. Some people say they understand. I want every of my students to understand. Everybody. If you don't understand now, it will be difficult to flow with me. Okay, but let us assume that you don't understand. You will understand in the next class because I will, there is something I do. I repeat what I say until you follow me. So don't worry. We're in this journey together. Thank you very much for tonight. And thank you for joining. I want to make you a promise by the help of God, that you will not regret choosing this path now, okay? I am saying that with a lot of confidence. I know what I've done. This is my, this is my area of uh, expertise, and I've done this for the past five years. So I can assure you, you will not, never, never regret it. Uh, somebody said, yes, you can edit the information you have on your derivative account. Yes, you can. Somebody said, uh, we should shift it to 8 p.m. Okay, so I don't know, Dr. George, can we, move, can we make this class officially 8 p.m.? 8 p.m., is that fine? Everybody, do we like 8 p.m.? If you support 8 p.m. class, let's we go with 8 p.m.
Okay, somebody's asking, when the market is consolidated, where were the big guys? Were they with 1,000 people are consolidated? State? No, the big guys were not there. Now, the big guys does not even need to be up to 1,000. It could be only 20 of them pushing the market because they have money. So they, they are not there. It means that they are not trading. They are not, their money is not in the market at that time. So they are not pushing the market. It's just that these retail traders are the ones that are struggling. Do you understand now? So the big guys are not there. They are not with the 1,000. They are just, I'm just using the 1,000 people to, you know, to illustrate the, the number of retail traders at that time. And out of the 1,000, uh, some of them are choosing to buy, why uh, some of them are choosing to sell. So the, the guys, the, the, if the majority of them are buyers, they are going to place a lot of money on the buys, right? They, 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 the big guys who want to come and take part of the money so they cannot support the buyers. They will go and sell. So that the market is, is a, as an opposition market. So you have to be wise to take your own share. Okay, so let's leave it at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock is fine. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. And uh, thank you, Dr. George, for the time. Um, that is all for tonight.